Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world today. I want to welcome you to the Sanctuary of Manor from Heaven Ministries. If this is your first time here, let me introduce myself. I'm Overseer Michael Armstrong, and you're in the place where the Spirit of the Lord dwells. Amen. And we know that where the Spirit of the Lord dwells, there is liberty. So you can lift your hands, you can open your mouth, you can give God a shout of praise, you can say hallelujah, you can say thank you, Jesus, thank you. Because I know God has done something good in your life. That there's a reason why you can lift your hands. There's a reason why you can open your mouth. There's a reason why you can give him some praise. Amen. So as you're entering into the sanctuary, we just want to welcome you again. If you've been here before, others have been here. We have family members that come and they join us from the north, the south, the east, and the west. When I'm telling you that, I'm talking about from the north continent of North America to the continent of South America. And we just thank you. We thank you for the continent of uh, Africa for coming to fellowship with us. I mean, from the top of uh, Ghana, from Accra, from, from uh, um, Nigeria, from, from Kenya, from uh, Uganda, from Zimbabwe, from Zambia. We thank God for you, South Africa. We thank God for you from Cape Town to Johannesburg to Pretoria to Durban. We thank God for you because we know that you could be doing something else with your time right now. But you thought not of yourself to come to fellowship with us here at Manor from Heaven Ministries. And I truly believe that you're going to receive a life-changing word. I don't know what you have need of, but the Lord said that he does. And he said that he will meet your need according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. And if you came here today looking to have your need met, then you came to the right place today. Amen. Because I know the Lord is going to speak something to you. He's going to speak something that's going to help you. Amen. So again, as you're entering into the sanctuary, share this message. Let others know. Let You can tag it right now. Share it right now. Let them know that Manor from Heaven Ministries is live right now. We're on the Facebook page. Uh, later on, if you didn't catch it, you can catch us on our YouTube page. But let somebody know that Manor from Heaven Ministries is live right now. And they have opportunity to catch in and, and uh, receive a life-changing word. And while you're doing those things, I want to open us up with a word of prayer. As others are entering into the sanctuary, we want to say good morning and thank you. Good afternoon and thank you. And good Good evening and thank you. Amen. So we thank God for you coming to fellowship with us. I'm going to open us up with a word of prayer and I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to do what he does in this atmosphere. Amen. 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 So Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your divine presence, which is in our midst. Oh Lord, your word lets us know where two or more are gathered in your name. There you shall be in the midst of them. Father, we thank you for knowing that you're not a man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you need to repent. For Lord, you gave us your word. And if there's nothing else we can stand on, we can stand on the word of God. Hallelujah. For heaven and earth will pass away, but your word, oh Lord, will forever, forever has been established and forever shall be. Father, we just thank you right now as your word is going forward in this atmosphere. That as your word is going forward, that someone will be healed. Healed. Someone will be delivered. Someone will be set free. Someone will have a closer walk with you. Someone will receive you as a savior in the mighty name of Jesus. So, Lord, we just thank you right now. And I pray, Lord, that as I decrease, you will increase. Have your way in this vessel, Lord. Use me now for your purpose. Use me for your glory, Lord. Allow others that are coming into the sanctuary now, even though they may see me, hear me. Allow them to hear your voice through this vessel, Lord, that they may know that they've been in the presence of the true and living God. Father, in all these things, things, I'm mindful to give you praise. I give you honor and I glorify you, Lord, because I declare and decree that there is no God greater than you. So have your way, Lord, not just where I'm seated, but allow your Holy Spirit, allow your omnipresence to fill the sanctuaries where your children have assembled this way, this day, from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Father, you know what they have a need of, and it is according to your word, Lord. Your word declares that every need shall be met. And Father, your word lets us know that as this word is going forward today, it cannot come back to you till it accomplishes the thing that you sent it to do. I thank you for using this vessel today, Lord, to send this word out into the around the world that, it, that as your children have assembled, they may receive that which they came to receive from this word. And all these things, Father, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory because we know that there is no God greater than our God. You're Jehovah God all by yourself. And besides you, there is no other. So have your way, Lord. Not just where I'm seated, but where your children have assembled this day. Have your way in their hearts and in their minds that they may receive a life-changing word here today. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Amen. So again, I thank you as you're entering in. Some of you uh, are just now entering in. We thank God for you coming in. Uh, believe me, we thank God from New York City to California, from Canada down to Florida. We thank God that you come to fellowship with us here. Amen. All right. So listen, I know your time is valuable. I'm not here to waste your time, but I'm here to give you a word from heaven. Amen. So within the next few minutes, if you will allow me to, that's just what I'm going to do. Uh, I got three scriptures that I want to open us up with. Um, they're 
First one is going to be in Matthew chapter 4, verse 24 from the New American Standard Bible. All three scriptures are going to come from the same Bible, the New American Standard. If by chance that I should change the scripture reading, I will let you know what reference I'm coming from. Uh, this way you can record it. Now, it may say different than the one that you're listening to right now, the one that's before you, but we're going to get the results that God intended us to get. Amen? Amen. All right. So, the first scripture is going to be Matthew chapter 24. Excuse me, Matthew chapter 4, verse 24. The second scripture is going to be Matthew 15, verse 28. And the last scripture is going to be Matthew 17, 18. Amen? Amen. All right. So, Matthew chapter, 20, chapter 4, verse 24, and it reads, And the news about him spread through, uh, through Sarah, uh, and they brought to him all who were ill, those suffering with various diseases and severe pain. Demon possessed people with epilepsy and people who were paralyzed and he healed them. Matthew 15, 28. Then Jesus said to her, O woman, your faith is great. It shall be done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed at once. Matthew chapter 17, verse 18, and it reads, And Jesus rebuked him, and the demon came out of him, and the boy was healed at once. The word of God is blessed, the children of God are blessed, and the word as it goes forward today, let it fall upon the, the hearts, the hearers, the readers, and the doers of God's word. Amen? Amen. Listen, the last time we got together, I spoke to you from the theme of healing and complete restoration. Healing and complete restoration. Uh, um, I want to thank everyone who listened to the message. I thank you for all, for the, uh, uh, most importantly, I really want to thank you for corresponding. Because some people, uh, when you heard this, you started sending me comments, you started a sending me emails and text messages, and you asked me questions, and I just wanted to help you with what it was that you asked me. And, and some may be saying, what were the questions? I'm glad you asked. Listen, I've got comments stating from, you know, people have been saying they've been going through areas of sickness in their life, and now you've been applying your faith for healing, and yet the results have been the same. As I said, last week's message was uh, healing and complete restoration. And there have been people who are saying, listen, I've been applying this word overseer, but yet and still my results have seen the same. Some of you stated that your faith hasn't been wavered. We thank God for that. Your faith hasn't been wavered, but yet you still don't know why you haven't been completely healed. Uh, uh, some people have said that they feel like walking away. They feel like walking away, but they said it's too easy to give up because then... Satan, the devil, wins, and you don't want the devil to win. Uh, uh, listen, after we've prayed together, we've, uh, uh, I'm always asked the same question. It seems like, uh, uh, overseer, what should I do? You know, I, I've tried this, and I'm trying that. What should I do? And my answer is always the same. If it wasn't you, I just want to let you know. When you're asking me, what should I do after I prayed? What should I do after I haven't received the healing? What should I do? My answer is always the same, and that is to trust God. Just trust God. What else can you do? Before I go any further with this message, if, if, in case I forget, I want to give you a title of today's message, and that is, Healing is a Process. Healing is a Process. Now, again, my brothers and sisters, I'm with you because I understand that there are people who are going through some chronic illnesses. You've been in a battle with sickness, and you just feel it this way. You're saying, Overseer, I've applied my faith. Overseer, I've, I've got together with a prayer group. Overseer, I, 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 I've got to the point where it's just like, God, where are you? As you said last week, when, when, when you, uh, uh, the message, if you hadn't heard the message, you can go and hear it on Facebook or you can come back and review it on um, face, Facebook or YouTube. But there was a part in the message when I was saying how we're, uh, um, we were talking about Lazarus and Lazarus was laying on a sickbed and he wanted to know where was Jesus in the process of his healing. He said, Lord, the Lord found out that, that Lazarus was sick and the Lord stayed two days longer where he was. And people, when they heard that, they were like, you know, I, I, overseer, I'm with you with that. I'm not trying to say that Jesus is not here, but what do I do? Where am I at? And when, listen, like I said, when you are at that point, all you can still do is trust God. When we hear God's word about healing, uh, our faith is built up so that we can receive it from his hand. We're looking to receive healing. And I want to let somebody know that God is a promise keeper. And if he's promised to provide for you, no matter what it is, as being his child, 
you can stand firm on the word of God that he is a promise keeper and he's going to keep his word and your needs shall be met. Jesus, all the time, he knew what the people needed. He knew. The Bible said the man was blind for 31 years, but Jesus knew what he needed. He knew. And Jesus knows where you are. And he knows what you have a need of also. Listen, when you or a loved one is sick, you're to pray in faith. Pray in faith, believing that God has heard you. Pray in faith, believing that your healing is on the way. And sometimes you have to surround yourself with faith partners. You people who will pray with you. People who will touch and agree with you. People who will stand in faith, believing that you're going to receive your healing. You're going to receive your healing. That's Listen, when people hear that, I know it's hard to find uh, uh, partners of faith to stand with. Because some people, when they hear you or they see you coming, they, their faith has wavered so much that they're like, I just don't know what to pray with you anymore. But they won't tell you that to your face. Because they're, they're like, listen, I've exhausted. And I know, brother, I know sister's been sick for a long time. But listen, you get yourself those who are going to stand with you in faith. Because there's a reward in it for them as it is for you. There's a reward in it for them. You know, and, and, and some people, as I said, you tell me this and you say, Overseer, I've done this and I've done that. I've even gotten faith partners, yet my condition stays the same. And I want to bring to your remembrance because I know you're going to start telling me our opening scripture tells us that they brought people to Jesus. People who were all or who were ill, people who were suffering, those were suffering from various diseases and they had severe pain, chronic pain. Some were demon possessed people, people with epilepsy and people who were uh, uh, the people who were bought, they were paralyzed and they brought people from all over who were sick and people from different parts of the region. They brought them to Jesus. From this region, from that region, they brought them to Jesus. And the Bible says that they that he healed them. He healed them. And as you also heard us read in our opening scriptures, some of them, the Bible said they were healed at once. And I know you say, yet your condition stays the same. Beloved, I want to let you know today that healing is a process. It's a process. It is. Uh, uh, only God knows. I don't have the answers. But only God knows why some people are healed instantly and some others, it seems that their uh, healing is done in a process. Only God knows that. God knows why some people are healed on earth and some people are healed when they get to heaven. Only God has the answers to those. But in the process of that, listen, God wants you to know that you can trust him, that you can stand on his word, that if he said he's going to do it, he's going to do it. And, and believe me, we all want to see the healings manifested while we're here on earth. But God lets us know that sometimes we're going to receive that healing in heaven where there's no more sickness. There's no more dying. There's no more pain. I don't know why God does what God does. I, I don't have the mind of God to say that. I'm, I'm not privileged to go in when God has those meetings, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I'm not there. I'm not there. But I do, I do know that God wants us to hold fast to his word, that he's able. He's able. Listen, when we don't receive uh, what we ask for, sometimes we need to check ourselves to make sure that there isn't a seed of doubt that's been sown in our heart. A seed of doubt to say, maybe God won't do it. Maybe, you know, we, we've prayed this prayer for so long. And it's not just in the form of sickness. There are people waiting for fi financial breakthroughs. There are people waiting just for breakthroughs or whatever it is. And some, they've allowed time to fester a seed of doubt. And James lets us know that if we have doubt, if we, can, if we waver about it, then don't even ask. Don't ask. And if there is a seed of doubt that's been blooming in you, the best thing you can do is root it out. Get that thing out of you. Anything that's contrary to the word of God, you need to separate yourself from it. Why? Because, listen, your physical body thrives in being in a right relationship on how well we're doing spiritually. All of that matters. It matters. I can't uh, have my spirit wave over to here and I'm trying to receive a healing right here. It all has to be lined up with the word of God in order for me to receive that which I'm looking for from God. It has to line up. Your physical body thrives in relationship to how well you're doing spiritually. When you're down and you're depressed uh, and it seems that there's no incentive, your natural mind 
tells you to praise God. But in the physical, you're saying your natural mind, your spiritual mind is telling you to praise God. And, and, and some people are saying, yes, spiritually, I know I should praise God, but physically, I can't. Let me tell you something. That's when you should. That's when you should praise God. When you're feeling like you can't then that's when you can. There are times when I open the word and I'm like, Lord, I, I, I just, I don't know where to read. I don't, and I read, even if it's a psalm, one psalm, just a verse, because you have to condition yourself to go that extra step. The easiest thing the devil wants you to do is to put it all away and say nothing is working. Nothing is working together for my good, but the devil is a liar because we have to stand firm on what the word of God tells us. Listen, I know that it may be, it seems hard sometimes to praise God. Because why? Because praising God is a choice. We're not obligated to do it. God gives us a choice. And he's looking for us to exercise our choice in the form of praising God. The psalmist tells us, Psalm 34 and 1 from the New American Standard Bible. He tells us this. David says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. David said, I'll bless the Lord at all times. When you're at your lowest point, that's when you need to bless the Lord. That's when you need to raise your voice in praise. When you feel that I just can't do it. Those are the things that God is looking for you to do. It's just like when you're praying for something and people say, well, overseer, I've been praying about this. I've been praying about that. And God hasn't done it. Should I stop praying? No, absolutely not. You have to always remember that God uh, inhabits the praise of his people and it's that fervent prayer that one that continuously come before God God sometimes will put you in a position to see if, well, if you really want it yes you're not begging God don't misunderstand it you're not begging God but you're letting your request you're letting your petition be made known before God and he's going to give you peace about it listen when you get to the point where you just pray about this today and you pray about that tomorrow you're all over the uh, 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 rainbow with it for here and there and there. God needs to know that you're specific about that one thing. You're specific. Jesus said, will you be made whole? Do you want to be healed? Tell me specifically what you want. I know you're blind. I know you're suffering. I, tell me what you want. And when you do that, you still have to give room to say, God, nevertheless, not my will, but let thy will be done. Let it be done. Why? Because healing is a process. Listen, nothing demonstrates trusting God like thanking him. When you thank God in the midst of a crisis, listen, healing is a process. And a thankful heart builds your faith. It builds your faith. Why? Because you, when you don't receive what it is you're looking for, you're still having faith. I'm hoping that you'd still have faith to believe that it's on its way. Unless God told you no, then keep asking continuously ask him fervently ask him if it's a healing that you need listen ask God God's healing power is evident throughout the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation we always see where God's healing power is manifested it's fully manifested through the ministry of Jesus as Jesus walked the earth and th uh, uh, through the atoning of his death uh, and through his resurrection he's opened the door of healing for all of us who trust him. We trust him for our healing. And when we thank him, even though we haven't received what we're asking him for, we thank him because we know that it's on the way. You have to be able to affirm these things. You have to be able to believe that it's on the way. It's on the way. Listen, God had told us in his word that he fulfilled his part of the healing process. He's fulfilled his part. And yet he continues. God continues to bless us. He continues to bless all the children's lives every day. God still pre prepares blessings for you. He still has something for you, even though he's already completed what he wanted to do. Let me tell you something. When you're saying he's completed, I'm saying this. God's job is to perform his word. And when I'm saying perform his word, I'm saying his word is to be carried out. His word is already done. It's been fulfilled. There's no uh, new Bible going to be written. Everything that God gives us is in his word. It's in his word. So God's job is to perform his word. He performs his word in his way. God's job is to perform his word. He performs his word in his wisdom. God's job is to perform his word. He performs his word in his timing and, his, and, and not only in his timing, but he also does it for his glory. And when God does what he does, we can't control God. If you have a God that you're controlling, then he's not the eternal God. 
He's not the almighty God. He's not the alpha and omega. If you can control him, if you can control your God, then your God is not the God of the Bible. He's not. God lets us know that his job is to perform his word in his way. His job is to perform his word in his wisdom. His job is to perform his word in his timing and is for his glory. And we can't control God. We can't. We can't. We just have to line ourselves up with the plan of God for our lives. Because God truly knows what's best for you. Our job is to, to uh, saturate our mind and our heart with the promises that we find in God's word. When we affirm the word of God over your life, what you're actually doing is you're building up your faith. I've been telling you all along, you have to affirm the word of God. By affirming it, you're building up your faith, believing and standing on the promises that God has spoken over your life. Here's an affirmation right here. Isaiah 54, 17, King James Version tells us what? No weapon formed against you will prosper. No weapon. Here's another affirmation from God. Um, 2 Corinthians 4.17 from the King James Version. It says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceedingly, exceeding an eternal weight of glory. No matter what it is that you're going through, there's no weapon formed against you that's going to prosper. No matter what it is that you're going through, you're, it's just a light affliction, which is but for a moment. And it worketh uh, for us a far uh, more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Here's another affirmation. I found this one in 2 Corinthians um, uh, 4.17, that same one I just read, but this is from the, uh, the Living Bible, and it tells us this. These troubles and sufferings of our of ours are after all quite small and won't last very long yet this short time of distress will result in God's richest blessings upon us forever and ever listen when you affirm the word of God over your life you'll find out that his word lets us know that these troubles, uh, these sufferings, that of ours, that we're going through, it is, it's, it's only for a short time, a quite small, and he says it won't last very long. I know we feel that we're going through some things that's taking years, if not days, that we can get through. And we also have to remember that God lets us know that just one day is a thousand years with him. And we feel that we've been suffering, going through for a long time. And that long time allows us to know that, yes, healing is a process. Healing is a process. But as you affirm the word of God over your life, you go through the Bible and look at the Bible as you're going through it and you affirm it. And take note of how many times God reached down from heaven and miraculously healed people. Look at how many times God has uh, reached down and physically healed. He's emotionally healed. He's spiritually healed. God lets us know that when we look through the scriptures and we see the results of faith of the people who uh, uh, stood with us, our friends in our prayer lines, in our prayer groups, who stood with us in faith, they also were rewarded with something because they stood with faith with you. So this is why it's important to find a good prayer partners, those who know without a shadow of a doubt. Remember when Jesus was doing the healings, he told them, hey, everyone else get out. And he kept those that were in faith with him. Peter, James, and John, everybody else, get out of here. Family, mother, and father, you can see this way. You can find a testimony. And this is with the girl Tabitha. Listen, the Bible tells us about the friends um, and the reward. Listen, um, there was a paralyzed man, and he had four friends. Matter of fact, this, you find this scripture in Mark chapter 2, verse 3 through 5 from the New American Standard, and it tells us this. And some people came bringing to Jesus a man who was paralyzed, carried by four men. And when they were unable to get to, the, to get to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And after digging an opening, they let down the pallet on which the paralyzed man was lying. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. 
Hallelujah, glory to God. Do you see what just happened here? The friends, you got to have people who are willing to get you into the presence of Jesus. They're willing to bring you to the feet of the altar of Jesus. Listen, how can you, the, when we read scriptures like that, the question is, how can we apply the lessons that you learn in these stories, stories like that? How can you apply them to your own journey of healing? Do you surround yourself with friends who know how to take your prayer request to the feet of Jesus? Uh, ha have you... Uh, 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 been in a situation where you know for sure that I can call on brother and sister and they will stand in faith with me to whatever the situation is. It doesn't always have to be in the form of receiving a healing for sickness, but can you find a prayer partner that can believe you for a breakthrough? Can you believe it? Can you find it? Listen, we have to do what God tells us to do in the parameters of what God tells, what he says. When we do that, listen, I just want to let somebody know something, and this is the truth, the gospel truth. We, myself, and I know you don't either, we never completely know. We can never completely understand God's ways. We don't. We, we want to believe that we have a, a hold on God. We want to believe that God did it this way, he'll do it that way. We want to believe that, but the truth is we just don't know. And there's nothing wrong with saying that. We don't know. Why God does what he does. We don't know how God does what he does. It's miraculous. It's signs and wonders. God is infinite. And listen, he's been God a long time. This is what he tells me. He says, Michael, I've been God a long time. And I don't need you to tell me how to do what I do. I've been God a long time. I don't need your help. I just need your obedience. And let me tell you something. And you may say, overseer, well, no. I know what God is going to do. I know everything God doing. And I have, to, I have to really question what you're saying, if that's you. I have to question it. Why? Because the word of God lets us know this. Um, listen, Isaiah chapter 55, verse 9, and this is from the New American Standard Bible, and this is what God says. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. My brothers and sisters, there's nothing wrong with saying I don't know. I don't know why God does what he does, because God lets me know in his word that his ways and his thoughts are higher than my, my thoughts. If you think you know more than God, then go and talk with him, Job, and that, let God ask you, where were you when I? Let God ask you those questions. And I hope that when you have that conversation with God, he doesn't come to you in a whirlwind. Maybe, maybe you can be more tactful about explaining to God about how God needs to handle God's business. But I want to let somebody know that, listen, God lets us know that his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Listen, but we, he also wants us to know that we can be confident. We can confidently take stock or take a stake or take a hold or take a claim on the promises that are found in the word of God. Meaning what? Meaning that when we know his word, knowing that God's word is true, God always tells us the truth in his word. He tells us the truth about himself and he tells you the truth about yourself if you really want to hear it. If you really want to hear it. God will tell you about yourself. I know sometimes we just think that we know so much about God and we just know that God should do it this way and God should do it that way. No, we don't know that. We don't. Deuteronomy 29, 29 tells us that the secret things of God belong unto him. And have not been revealed unto us as to what they are. It hasn't. So there's nothing wrong. People ask me all the time, Overseer, what about this? What about... If I don't know, I don't know. But let me pray about it with you. Let me go in prayer and then we'll come back and I'll see what the Lord will speak to me about what it is that you're asking. But for me to just pop off and tell you this and tell you that, that's just what I'm doing. And it's not going to help you. Listen, God wants us to take heart. He wants you to take heart. Take heart in wherever you are in your healing journey by knowing that God loves you and he truly has the best stored for you. He has your best interest at heart. God tells you that you are the apple of his eye. God tells you that your name is inscribed in the palm of his hands. God tells you that he knows the numbers of the hairs upon your head. These are the things that you have to affirm to yourself. When you find yourself going through your journey of healing, because healing is a process. It is. And we don't know why the scriptures let us know, as I read in my opening scripture, that some 
were healed. All were healed. Some were healed instantly, at once, suddenly. And yet some, it didn't happen. It didn't happen instantly. And you may be one sitting here saying, yes, overseer, I'm one that the healing process didn't take place instantly. But that does not negate the word of God to be true. Don't lose hope. Why? Because healing is a process. And we know God is faithful. Why? Because he's the one. God is the one who works all things together. He works all things together for his glory. And he works all things together for our good. For your good. For my good. For our good. We can hold fast to the word of God knowing that. Knowing that. Listen. God only expects us to trust him. He expects, excuse me, to, he expects us to trust him and to believe him that your healing is coming. Why? Because it's not God's desire to see you sickly. It is not. God created everything. This is what we talked about last, last time we were together. When God created, he created everything and he saw to it that it was well. Sickness did not jump on the scene until Genesis chapter 3 when he slithered his way into the garden. That's when sickness came. That's when death came. That's when disease came. That's when destruction came. That's when murder came. In Genesis chapter 3, God wants us to know that it is not his desire to see you sick. And I want to I want to help people out here. I want to help you because I've had people come to me and they tell me they say I've had a conversation with people and they tell me they say overseer, uh 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 I'm against taking medications. And I say, why? And they tell me, they say, overseer, I'm against taking medications because I believe that God will supernaturally heal me. And I believe that he will heal me without the assistance of prescribed medication. Whew. My brother and sister, that takes a, a great deal of faith. But then at the same time, I would say it takes a great deal of foolishness. I'm not telling you that God can't do because we've read it in his word. Some things God did and he did it instantly, suddenly, at once. And then there's some things where it takes a process. And let me tell you, talking about, talking about taking medication. If that's you, I want you to hear me, and I want you to hear me clearly. People overdose on prescribed medications daily. But no one has ever overdosed on prayer. You can never have too much prayer. You can stay on the prayer line until their hands wear out on you. You can never receive too much prayer. And I'm saying that because this. If you're under a doctor's care regarding your illness and the doctor has prescribed medication for you, I'm telling you to apply medication, take your medication and apply prayer. Apply more prayer than you do medication. If you're to take the medication three times a day, you take the medication three times a day, but you could probably take prayer 12 times a day because the prayer is not going to kill you. It's not going to kill you. You have my permission. You tell your doctor, you say, doctor, I, I, I met Overseer Armstrong and he told me to take the medication that you're giving me, but he also gave me permission to apply more prayer than I take the medication. Absolutely. I'll say it again. I'm not telling you not to take your medication. Take it as it's prescribed to you. And I'm saying that you, as you take your medication, you apply more prayer than your medication. You apply more prayer than your medication. Listen, I want people to realize that God, you have some Christians, good Christians, who are in the medical field. And they're a blood-washed, born-again believer just like you. And God placed them in your life to tell you what's wrong with you eternally. Uh, internally, excuse me, internally or mentally. I know this is a problem with people of God. We don't believe that we need to go. We don't believe that Christians get depressed. You better read the story about David when he's sitting in this cave. We don't believe that, that Christians get sick. You better understand. Listen. And God sends a physician. He sends a physician to heal you. And that physician will give you medication. And that physician is, is, is licensed practicing medication. Listen, let me help somebody out. No one has ever died overdosed from having too much prayer. I want to stress that. 
And I said it again. Some people told me they said they won't even go to a doctor because they believe by taking medication they're, they're, and accepting treatment from a doctor, they somehow feel that they're failing to exercise their faith in God's word. And they've been taught to think that by seeing a doctor and by taking medication is displeasing to God. I want to tell you that's not so. The devil is a liar because the devil will make you think that if you go to see a doctor, if you go to take the prescribed medication, that your faith is not strong enough to where God wants you to be. And that is a lie from the pit of hell. Not so. James tells us in James 1.17, this is from the Living Bible. It tells us this. It says, what, but whatever is good and perfect comes to us from God, the creator of all light. And he shines forever without change or shadow. My brothers and sisters, I want to just highlight this part of that scripture. And that is this. Whatever is good. It says, whatever is good and perfect comes from God. Period. Listen. Whatever is good is a gift coming down to us from God. God, our Heavenly Father. And healing in whatever form, it is good. And it comes down from God to us. Did you hear me? Healing is, in whatever form, it is legally prescribed medication. It is good. And it comes down. It comes from God to us. God put a brain in a doctor that prays to God. I know some surgeons who do um, surgery on your heart. They put in stents. They put in transplants. And they're Christians. And they tell me, because I heard other people saying, oh, you know they're like God because you're able to do this. They tell you in a minute, don't praise me like that. I'm just a servant. And I thank God for giving me the brain that I'm able to help you in your time of your need. And I, I know physicians like that. I know some. And I thank God with them. I prayed with them. And I pray that God will continue to bless them, that they remain humble, and that their practice will continue to grow because this is what God wants us to see. He, whatever it is, whatever the form, it comes from God to us to help us. Healing is from God. It's from God. And listen, when you go throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, we see proof of this principle about healing coming from God. In uh, Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 12 from the New American Standard, it tells us this. And by the river on its bank, on one side and on the other, will grow all kinds of trees for food. Their leaves will not wither. Their fruit will not fail. They will bear fruit every month because their water flows from the sanctuary and their fruit will be for food and their leaves for healing. My brothers and sisters, that automatically sends my mind to the Amazon rain, the rainforest, because there's so much that God has put on this planet in the form of plant life to help us, to heal us in the form of medication. God gave Ezekiel a vision of a life-giving river. And on the banks of the river, he said there were trees and the trees had leaves for healing. Leaves for healing. Listen, Jeremiah lamented. When I'm saying lamented, the Bible lets us know lamented means he cried. He cried over the spiritual condition of God's people. Where? In Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 22 from the King James Version, it says this. Jeremiah says, if there's no balm in Gilead, is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Listen, Jeremiah said, is there no medicine that's when he's talking about a bomb in Gilead. He says, is there no medicine in Gilead? Is there no physician there? He says, why is there no healing for the wounds of my people? He's talking about the, his, when he says uh, the, the daughter of my people recovered. The daughter, he's talking about Israel. And this is what God wants us to see. That there, there's always been a form of medicine that God gives us. In 1 Timothy 
chapter 5, verse 23. And I, I know people abuse this scripture, but I'm going to read it to you anyway. In 1 Timothy 5, 23, it says, uh, Paul talking to Timothy, and he says, Do not go on drinking only water, but use a little wine for the, for the sake of your stomach and your frequent ailments. The apostle Paul is telling Timothy, use a little wine for your stomach's sake and for your frequent ailments or uh, infirmities. Because Timothy might have had an upset stomach. He might have had like a uh, um, flu-like virus. You know when you get the uh, flu, sometimes you can have an upset stomach and it can cause you to have nausea or things of that nature. And he tells uh, um, Timothy to use a little wine. Now, I don't want to get into that conversation with you because I already know some going to say firm and unfirm. That's between you and God and how the Lord leads you as you pray. Don't abuse the word of God. Amen. Don't abuse it. But the Bible lets us know that he tells us that even in the form of wine, it's medicine. It's medicine. Amen. So we have to take advantage of what God gives us because it comes down from God to us. You know, I know some people who had stage four cancer and they struggled accepting chemotherapy as a treatment. And they thought that by refusing the treatment, they would be standing in faith. Standing in faith, believing that God would supernaturally heal them. And it turned out that because of their pride, because of their ignorance, because of their foolishness, it's sad to say that they went on. They went on home to glory. And many other people have followed the same manner of going home to glory. And I really want to say before their time, because they refuse medical treatment, thinking that they're standing in faith with the word of God. They missed God's healing for themselves. Because they wouldn't humble themselves to receive healing on another level. And if you're struggling, you, over, if you're struggling with that decision, you're struggling over that decision, or when you receive, when should I receive medical treatment? Should I even receive medical treatment? Should I or should I not? And you want to stand only on God's word. I would, I'm applauding you to stay prayerful. And consider stepping out on faith by doing both. Meaning, receive medical attention from a licensed physician. And receive prayer from your prayer group, from your pastor, your bishop, archbishop. If there's nobody else, lay hands on yourself and say, and faith, Father, I'm believing you for my healing. I'm believing you. Listen. Don't get yoked up, jacked up, and miss your healing because you're standing in faith, believing God to supernaturally heal you. We don't know why God does what he does. Some are healed instantly. Some are healed when they reach glory. We don't know. God lets us know that his thoughts and his ways are not like ours. Don't miss what God wants to do for you. Don't miss your healing. Because you won't humble yourself to receive healing on another level. Now I'm not talking another level with this new age crystals and praying to rocks and things of that nature. No, I'm not telling you that. I'm telling you to... If you're going to see a physician and the physician prescribed you medication, then you take what the, what the physician prescribed to you and you stand on faith, believing for your healing. And you also stand in your prayer group, your circle of prayer friends, believing. Listen, healing is a process. And God's desire is to see you healed. God wants to see you whole. God wants to see you set free. God wants to see you completely restored in Jesus' name. He does. I do. And your family, your circle of friends want to see you standing on the word of God. If you believe God is able to give you uh, uh, eternal life in his presence, 
then don't miscredit God to think that he can't heal you. And if the healing is taking its time in the form of the medicine, in the form of the treatments, stand firmly on the word of God, believing that your help is on the way. It's on the way. My brothers and sisters, that's all I wanted to bring to you today. I just want somebody to be able to know that healing is a process, that God is able to do what he said he can do in your life, and he is no respecter of person. If God was able to heal one person, he can heal us all. He can heal us all. He can heal us all. Don't let somebody mis represent, make you feel that you don't have enough faith to be healed. That's another trick from the devil. You got enough faith to be healed. And you believe God for your healing. And God is faithful and just to perfect that which concerns you. There's nothing more that concerns God than to seeing you healed, whole, restored, set free, delivered, sanctified, blessed beyond measure. That's what God wants for you. That's what I want for you. And that's what you want for yourself. So stand firm, believing the word of God, affirming the word of God. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. Affirm these things and watch God do for you what you can't do, what the doctor couldn't do, what the medicine couldn't do, what the therapist couldn't do. Watch God do for you what only Jesus is able to do. And that is to manifest the healing in your body. Amen? Amen. Listen. Before we go, I just want to see if somebody has enough faith to receive Jesus. If you never received Jesus, I want to offer Jesus to you today as a Lord and Savior. And you'll also know him to be a healer. Let me let you know something. There's been people who don't believe Jesus. They're not believers, but they've been healed. God, I believe, heals people like that, non-believers. I believe God heals them so that they can receive healing from God. They can receive healing. What are you talking about, overseer? Or you think, see, this is where some of you are now. You're thinking that everybody that gets healed has to be a Christian. You think if they're, if they're not saved, God won't heal them. And that's not true. God will heal the uh, uh, non believer so that they can become a believer. You have, I don't have time to go through it with you right now, but I'll give you a hint. When you get an opportunity, read a story about Naaman, who was a leper, who did not know the Lord. And read a story about Naaman. He's in the Bible, okay? Listen, if you don't know Jesus for the pardoning of your sins, now's your time. I want to extend Jesus to you like it's nobody's business. It's just you and Jesus right here, right now. And all you have to do is say, Jesus, I need you to come into my life because I'm a sinner and I know that I can only be saved through your grace, through your grace and your mercy. And I know that you've already died for my sins, that if by be believing in you, believing in my heart, and confessing you out of my mouth, I know that I am saved. And if that's you today, you just received Jesus, because now you are a sinner who was saved by grace. Amen? And I thank God for you. I thank God for you coming into the family of Christ. And listen, even if you are battling some sort of illness right now, or you paralyzed, para, um, paralysis within your body, God is able to do for you what you can't do for yourself. He's forever faithful, and we can stand on the word of God when we affirm the word of God, and we'll find out that God is able to do what he said he can do in our lives, and he'll turn our lives upside down and make us, allow us to relive life anew. Amen? All right, listen, I got to pray for you because I see the time is moving. I know your time is valuable. Let me pray for you before we leave this sanctuary. Amen? And we're going to just continue to believe God for your healing. We're going to continue to believe God that you're, uh, uh, for whatever it is, your breakthrough, we're going to believe God for it, for your salvation, for your walk, your Christian walk. We are believing God for it. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, I just thank you right now for these, your children, who thought not of themselves to come to assemble today, Lord, that they may hear a word from heaven to know that healing is a process. Lord, your word lets us know that they brought people to you from all from all walks of life, Father. Those who were ill, those who were suffering from various diseases, from severe pain, that were demon-possessed, they had epilepsy, Lord, they were paralyzed, and yet your word lets us know that they were healed. Some of them, Lord, your word lets us know that they were healed at once. Some of them lets us know, Lord, that they were healed suddenly and father yet we know that some were healed 
after a period of time. And we thank you right now, Lord, for allowing us to know that your word is forever been established and that healing has been offered unto us this day. Father, I pray right now for healing upon these, your children. You know what area of life they need healing. And I pray right now, Lord, for every uh, ounce, for every liter of medicine before it will go into their body, that it will go into your hedge of protection first. Father, I pray right now for every caregiver that before they touch them, they must come through your hedge of protection first. For every doctor, for every nurse, for every therapist who's in contact with your child, I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that they will go through your hedge your protection before they can touch them and right now father i'm praying that as they're hearing this word that they will be able to give a testimony a praise report that they will stand before the doctor and the doctor will look and marvel not at modern medicine but at the heal and touch of jesus christ which can do all things but fail in the name of jesus father we thank you in knowing that you're no respecter of person for if you heal one you can heal many and we thank you for it right now in the name of jesus I pray for your children's breakthrough. I pray for their salvation. I pray that they may have a closer walk with you. I pray, Father, that you will continue to allow them to stand under the open door of heaven, Lord, as you pour out a blessing upon them that they didn't have room enough to receive. Meet their need right now, Lord, according to your riches and glory through Christ Jesus, that they may know this day that they've been in the presence of the true and living God. And, Father, whatever their need is, meet it, Lord, according to your riches and glory through Christ Jesus and allow them to stand firmly on your word here today that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Allow them to know here today, Father, that they are blessed, that they are highly favored. Father, allow them to stand firm knowing that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. Allow them to know, Lord, that your word declares that you know the numbers of the hairs upon their head. Father, allow them to know that their name is inscribed in the palm of your hands. Father, allow them to know today that they are the apple of your eye and it is your desire to see them healed set free made whole in christ jesus name amen amen and amen again amen again you are blessed and not cursed amen amen listen as you go through the rest of this week as you go through the rest of this month don't forget to make time for god because god has already made time for you amen amen if you are being blessed by the words from Manna from Heaven Ministries and would like to give a donation or a contribution, please go to the link below. Thank you, and may God richly bless you.